Hi there, good afternoon. Welcome to IndyCar on Tuesday, the 14th of August. My name is Gordon Ross. In the news today, something which you will definitely not have heard of um, from the mainstream media, and that is the news that um, blockchain voting systems are now being trialled by the Scottish Government in conjunction with universities and uh, private firms. At the moment, we have a very antiquated voting system, as we all know, and if you remember from the previous um, uh, but from the previous ind independence referendum in 2014, we also know that the postal voting system that was attached to that referendum was highly suspect and corrupted uh, on purpose by the leader of the Conservative Party who was never punished for actually interfering with the, the postal vote illegally. And despite that, the, uh, the actual poll result stood and was accepted by everybody. However, we all know that there were massive irregularities during that referendum. There were uh, unaccountable, uh, huge attendances, over 96% turnout in some locations, particularly on the postal vote. So irregularities were everywhere. Uh, yes, postal votes turned up in the thousands and carrier bags on the streets, and, and there was a great deal of unhappiness about the way the entire thing was conducted. So to avoid this kind of thing happening in the future, the Scottish Government, having, uh, having asked for permission for the uh, Electoral uh, Commission, from the Electoral Commission, for us to look at other ways of voting which are more secure, have got permission to test out two blockchain voting systems. Now, the easiest way to imagine a blockchain voting system is to think of um, something which is online, which you can access through your phone or your tablet or your computer, <coughs> and which is a bit like a ledger. If you imagine that every every single voter in a referendum was writing yes or no on a on a column of a ledger uh, in an office on a sheet of paper, then every one of those yes or no's which are written with your signature next to them cannot be rubbed out by anybody or erased without everybody who signs the book seeing that. And that's effectively what a blockchain system is, except it's electronic, and that ledger is available for everybody who has a phone connected to the system to see. So that means when you make your vote, not only can you see it, but everybody else involved in the voting can see it as well. They don't know who you are, you'll just be a number, but you know what you voted, you know what your number is, and your vote stays there on the ledger. Anyone attempts to tamper with it, all of the rest of the people on the system, their, uh, their phones, their systems and software will look at that and say, that is a an illegal interference with that vote and would reject it. And this is why blockchain voting systems are so secure and why many big banks and other companies use them for uh, massive amounts of money transferring from one place to another. Now as well as I've, I've banged on a lot about blockchain in the past about why it will be good for us as a country to use blockchain because not only can it be used for referendums, it can be used for obtaining public opinion about anything that the government wants to do. Or in fact anything that the public wants to do can also be voted upon in order to make government do it. And it does this in an entirely transparent way that everybody can see and that nobody can tamper with. Now the, the benefits of this are enormous because any country which adopts blockchain electronic ledgers for all of its day-to-day -day financial and uh, electoral and anything, in fact, any publicly uh, approved venture that government engages in will have a massive advantage in terms of speed, efficiency and cost and the ability to move quickly on any, uh, any decision that the public wish the government to make. So there are clear advantages to having this system. It's been shown in, in studies that over 80% of the Scottish population have access to the internet on a regular basis, either through their phones, uh, their payphone, uh, sorry, their smartphones, um, or laptop computers, or tablets, or Kindle readers, or their PCs, their computers. Lots of things that you can now use to access the internet, including even your television set. So there is no excuse for anybody not having access to a system like this when all the technology is sitting around them in their daily lives and they can easily access it. If they don't know how to do it, it's easy for somebody to show them. So as I said at the beginning of this program, there are now four systems in existence that I know of. 
Two of them, uh, one, of, one of them has been developed by an independence campaign group, and which is at the moment not uh, being trialled yet. The other one is a publicly uh, available piece of software called Clearpoll, which can be used by any group or individual to have any kind of, uh, of poll, basically. It's, it's publicly accessible and can be used to measure public opinion accurately over a very large sector of society, not just a thousand individuals like we get from the domestic polling companies, but tens of thousands of individuals from all across the country can access the system and take part in the poll. So we have a high degree of reliability um, if the system is used properly. Now in addition to that, the Scottish Government is trialling two systems I believe at the moment in conjunction with universities and private companies to test the system out and to see how foolproof it is, how quick it is, uh, and how unhackable the system might be. In other words, testing its security out. Whichever one of these two systems is the most um, versatile and the most secure, I guess, will become uh, the choice of government for future uh, referendums and other, other polls, including general elections. Uh, the good thing about this is that it will get rid of the need for postal votes entirely because people who are bedridden, in hospital, who can't get to a polling station can simply vote through their telephone. And not only can you vote during the actual poll itself, which usually happens on one day, but the, the polling could happen over, say, a week, uh, with the window for the polling to close, say, on a Friday night. And there is no count, because the system tallies up the count as it goes along. So at any point through the week, people can see how many votes have been cast and which side is winning. And eventually, even before the result is declared, it will become obvious from the arithmetic which side has won. And so whichever side has won or whichever side has lost, then they can declare themselves the winner or the loser can congratulate them, even before the poll closes. It's a very, very versatile system. It is already used uh, in, I think it's, I'm trying to remember the name of the country, I think it's Slovenia, has its entire economy run by blockchain systems. Everything is run this way. Governments run this way. Businesses run this way. Any movements of money are done this way. And the great thing about it is, it, sorry about the break in transmission, it completely stamps out all kinds of corruption, both from government private companies, individuals, people trying to hack or sabotage the system. It doesn't tolerate any kind of corruption. It is entirely transparent, everybody can see it, and every user has their own copy of the blockchain on their phone. Everybody sees the same document. Everyone sees the votes. Nobody can miss somebody tampering with a vote because it's publicly accessible. No more secrecy, no more hiding yourself in a ballot, you know, in a ballot box uh, cubicle to make your vote. You can make the vote in the privacy of your own home. Nobody knows who you are. You are just a number on the system. But your number is unique to you, and the system will ask you for up to three or four different forms of identification to prove that it is a human being, not a robot that's voting and that you have information about members of your family, things that happened in the past, secret information that only you would know that would prove that you're not a robot and that you're not somebody hacking the system. And that happens at the beginning when you register. Once you're registered, nobody can change any of those details, nobody can change any of the votes that you make. And this is the wonderful thing about it. So it's good news because it means that when we do come 